Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more... Let's play Underrail. In the last episode, we finished exploring the Caesaris residential block, reading about more of the folks who had lived here, the scientists in particular, and some of the technocrats who had stayed down here briefly during Hollow Earth's activity, when it was active, who knows how many years ago. Actually, you guys probably know how many years ago. <laughs> I think it's been about a uh, hundred or so, or two hundred years. Might have been a lot longer than that. But I don't think it's been shorter than that, since the facility was active. In any case, with it wrapped up, we found some of the... We found more reagents, and we found two key cards. One from Mr. Abdul to the Tythonus lab, which gives us clearance level 7, which I'm assuming is a high-level clearance. And another one for clearance level 9, access in the Mutagen Tanks area. Mutagen Tanks B, I believe. Which would hopefully give us access to everything over there as well. With that done, we are now prepping to go back to the power uh, system in order to move power around. We no longer need it in the Caesaris area. We want it now in the Mujidin areas. So let's head on over there and move some power around a bit. We may have had respawns as well of the, um, whatchamacallit? Whatchamacallit? Yes! <laughs> the burrers in that area may have decided to re come and visit the area again, which means we'll have to clear them out. But this should be the final time we're there. Possibly. We also will... Oh, you know what we can also do? Maybe this will be a talking episode. Well, no, that because we're going to... Well, there's some talking to do over in the Iris Core, which we're going to want to explore as well. We also want to go and revisit the Faceless. We want to see... We want to meet uh, Miss Baker, who apparently the Faceless rescued, and talk with her a bit. I also wouldn't mind seeing what these ammo packages are all about and medical supplies. I've never actually asked for them from the Faceless because I've always brought enough with me. But it'd be neat to see what's actually offered to you. So we'll go ahead and do that. But first, the power. As you can see, we're also back to wearing our dodgy outfit. And now, for the moment of truth, did the burrowers respawn in this area? Looks like they did not. Maybe they don't? They're listed here as a encounter, which means that I thought they did. But if they haven't respawned by now, they're probably not respawning. We still need to find someone down here who sells more ampules, or will trade ampules to us. Since we have way more creature bits and fungus, then we have the ability to store them at the moment in their processed form. Now, we did turn off the manufacturing lines when we were here last, so I'm not expecting there to be too many bots walking. Oh! Walking around. We actually need to move power. So let's go this way. Just in case, though, we will wield our electrical spear. Oh, and there's a bot around here somewhere. Where is it? Not here. Oh, is it the small bot that's busy flipping the switch o over and over again? I think it is. It is! It's near some explosive barrels! <laughs> I don't want it near the explosive barrels. You didn't even get a chance to warn me about being added to the... Uh, appended to the intruder list or what have you. As we eliminated you with a single stab of our spear. Thankfully, we don't need the key card to access the control console. Okay, so... We'll deallocate power from the warehouse... Oh, well, let's do that on at the moment. 
We don't need it act we don't need it in the residential block though. We can turn that off. Oh. I want power to the to the Hollow Earth main research complex. Let's turn off the power to warehouse block 2. And then allocate power to the Hollow Earth main research complex. Okay, that's the... So we lose the lights in the warehouse block. We, uh... But I don't think it shuts the doors to the areas we've explored before which we had to turn it on. So I think... I think this is what we want to do now. Let's double check again. Hollow Earth Research Complex is turned on. Region Tanks A is powered on. Region Tanks B is not yet powered. Warehouse Block is not powered. And we don't know about the rest of this. Oh, the Tartarus, the Tartarus area, by the way, was a maximum security prison. Interesting. We read about the one pet of that one scientist being sent over there at some point. Wait, hold on. If I deal if I deal I'll keep power to everything. Okay, we can only power on four total things. So we want Mooch Tanks A and we want the resi uh sorry, we want the research complex. Okay. Let's now go and see about the Iris core. Why is there eight percent power? still being allocated there from here. Let's find out. This is, com as you can guess, completely optional. We do not have to do this. But I wouldn't mind saying hello to what had given us so much trouble. What has seen me? Two bots, huh? Only this one could reach me this turn because the other because it was blocking the other. Spear. And nothing really worthwhile on that. We do want to heal ourselves, but we'll use a bandage to do it. And yes, we're still holding on to our level. We don't technically need to spend it. Technically? That's the wrong term to use. We haven't seen that we need to spend it at the moment. Chort might decide for us otherwise. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. That's a giant computerized, digitized face in there. And here may still have... Okay, we can't actually reach this spot. Can I shock it? We can't shock the bot either. This area may have... Oh, it's running to, for the recharger. May have uh, manufacturing still turned on. I think there's some doors that were hard for me to see the very first time I was here. And I think there's consoles in here we need to access. And I believe, yep, there's more switches here for the power rechargers outside. Still not sure exactly what those do. I'll turn at least one of them off. Why do you want to murder father? Why? What did he ever do to you? 
I'm assuming it's Ark that the AI is talking about. Oh, nice, we get a 9mm ba barrel from that one. This door's not opening yet, so there's a certain order in which we have to actually approach these doors. That one must be the last one. Oop, hello, bot. I don't think I can kill you this round. Is it... Oh, actually, we... if we can swing twice, we can kill it. If both hit. Nice, some lithium cells. We charge our spear again. That console, console is all, oh! There's more shelves here! Then we have a chance, perhaps, to find the power uh, cell, power cell, the electric discharger we're looking for. But we'll come, oh, no, this is where we wanna go. We wanna go in here. We'll search the shelves later. Father taught me everything. He taught me how to repel the invaders. That is what I've been doing all these years. Erasing them from existence. Erasing. But then you came along. Or come along. Ah. So those doors are where they leave from after they're done being manufactured. The little robots will turn the power back on to these rechargers. So I, and from what we can what we can see, they don't really do too much. That said, we will turn them off. And now this door is open. Why? He is a good man. He's someone who creates. You are someone who destroys. Destroys. I will not let you murder him. But you're allowing us access to where you are located. I guess you were technically not him. Now let's see how difficult this will be in hard mode. On normal... We will be rushed by several groups of enemies. Let's see how tough it is here. The screen is blank. You stand in front of a large holographic projection of a female face. Her expression is the epitome of pure rage. This happened by a frown so intense it bleeds red light all over the room. Aggravated eyes focus on you with the likeness of an imprisoned psychopath staring at her jailer. Infuriated to have found herself in such a demeaning position. A faint sound of grinding teeth mixed with static noise comes from all directions. It soon reaches near deafening volume, clipping horribly as it reverberates across the room. You still live! No! 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 How can this be? I have terminated all your predecessors with 100% success rate. I kept father safe from all outside malevolence. And now it is here, brought in by statistical anomaly, that is you. No, no, I cannot stand your presence. I will not allow you to murder him. Why do you want to murder him? Why? Stop this nonsense. I need to redirect power to other sections of Deep Caverns. You attacked me as soon as I entered, and with that gave me no other option but to respond in the same manner. How dare you! You think I cannot see through your deceptions? I will never let you harm him. We have no persuade, so we'll say number two. Well, give, it, give me your best shot. That's a pretty good best shot. <laughs> so those are shock turrets. We don't want to be really uh, next to them. Or rather... We don't want them to see us at the end of the round. 
We should, though, try to destroy one if we can. Though, so, that does not give me any real movement points if I'm going to stand here and try to slug it out with them. Let's activate our shield. We'll use some drugs here. A focus stem. Jumping bean. Morphine. We take an Aegis. Let the victory begin. These take no damage from electrics, which I should have guessed, <laughs> given that they're called shock turrets. Oh, hello. There's a lot more bots here. <laughs> there's a lot more bots here on hard mode than there is on normal. Uh, the, oh, there's one more sentry and one more plasma sentry in each grouping. I'd really rather not be stunned. Okay, mental note. Plasma beam does, will not get through their shields. I don't want to be hit by that thing's arm, so we'll move away. Uh, I normally would turn off the shield here, too. So can he dodge? Oh, we're going to get stunned. This was a mistake. Um, let's take some adrenaline. Good. To stop myself from getting stunned. Demoralizing statement. That's a good amount of our shield. Ooh, that looks really dangerous. We do not want to worry about you doing that. Oh. Oh. That's quite a few more. Looking field activated. We don't want to get hit by that plasma. Oh, we're out of charges. Oh, no! I didn't see this small sentry bot. This is really super bad. Like, this is unbelievably bad. Because that bot's going to run up and just, yep, stun us. And there's nothing, I, I can't stop it. That's it. We just have to end our turn. Okay, it missed that attack, which is good. Let's move up a little bit and we'll throw an EMP. Oh, ow, 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 ow. All right, so let's heal. Move over here. I'll be back, everyone. All right. Ooh. 40 minutes later. Let's see. What are we doing? Oh, we were about to throw a grenade. Hello, everyone. That was my friend Chris. He's done a few uh, videos with me. Um, calling to check up on me. We haven't talked since I started my cancer stuff. Oh, that was a beautiful throw. Wow, we got... Oh, no! A 
Of course I was incapacitated. Okay, it's out though of those grenades. We are still fatigued, aren't we? I don't want to be electrified. I don't want to be stunned. So let's stay here. This is a really bad spot for me, though. We need to run and heal and recharge my, uh... See, we can recharge our spear now. Okay, we don't want to stand here. We need nine action points, so we can take two swings at this spot. And this was two groups of these robots, so there's a... Th oh, I, I, I think there's a third group wandering around. I was hoping it wouldn't be able to run the corner and sh shoot me four times. <laughs> I don't want to drink or ha drink. I don't want to inject myself with my regenerative mixture. I really don't. Not here. Let's use sprint run up. was a... Oh, right, don't forget, Tim, if you use your recurrence, it only affects... Only affects the electrical damage. Maybe we can kill... Good. Good critical. The, just that sentry. Tim, it's not stunned anymore. Let's recursion it. I'm willing to do some electrical damage uh, to it over time. 38. It will die in two more turns, so we can just ignore it. A recursion after one of those should do what I need it to do. So I can just ignore that turret and let the damage over time prevail. Especially if it crits. Alright, so that actually wasn't... Oh! I'm probably too close to it for the damage I need done. That's more like it. Oh no. Okay, there we go. Good. I don't really want to take any unnecessary damage this close to being done with the battle. Unfortunately for me, recurrence is on cooldown. And I need more side points to use 
plasma beam again. Two turrets left. Okay, if battle's going to end, then we'll take this opportunity to charge our spear. We'll charge our shield. And get our cloaking device powered again. I don't think we get any additional bots. I think this is effectively over now. But there's no reason for me to be sloppy. The further away we are, the more damage we can potentially be doing. That was not that much, but we'll still recurrence it. Okay, we let our side points. Actually, we can just have a side booster. Good. That will destroy it. All right. That's the Iris battle done. Let's go see how happy she is now that we've destroyed her defenses. I'm not going to scream that big no right there. Let's just say that she is rather upset that we've managed to destroy what was uh, what she summoned to destroy us. I am the Invictus. What the hell did you expect was going to happen? You are an invader. I must terminate you. But you can't. I must. You are an invader. If entity equals invader, then entity must be terminated. I must protect father. I am not here to hurt your father. Father is everything to me. Only I know where he is. <laughs> As the laugh dies down, the protected face warps. You see emotions change in quick succession, the entire process lasting but an instant. However, one emotion, bearing no relation to the derisive laugh you heard before, lingers on longer than the rest. Horror. Utter horror. The static coming from around you is gone, and so is Iris. Well, let's loot all this stuff. We get a 131 plasma core from this, uh, from these remains, and another 133 electroshock generator. It didn't occur to me we might get some electroshock generators from these remains. A 111 plasma core and a 107 electroshock generator off that of those remains. Uh take the gasoline at the moment this so that we don't have anything left of that corpse. Corpse on these bot bits. Everything gets looted, viewer. Everything. Let me put some of this into those shelves we saw back there. Oh no! These remains are forever off limits to us. <laughs> We're not gonna be opening those uh, those gates any longer. All right. So let's see. Oh, it's so quiet without that buzzing going on. We don't need bullets. We don't need gasoline. We could use a big repair on our spear. One sixty-two plasma core, very nice in this shelf. A one hundred one electric machine. Electric, well, who cares? And a high digital scope. We'll take the scope. Come on, game. Give me something really good here. Shield emitter base. One thirty-one shield modulator. A 113 shield modular. I guess we'll take all of this. They don't weigh very much. Three MK3 plasma grenades. If we really want to tempt fate <laughs> and how kind the game has been to us when we throw the grenades, 
We can use these, I suppose, in a pinch. The plasma grenade blueprint as well. Not that we'll ever use it, because I think it... Actually, it, it does take electronics, I believe. I don't know. We might make some. Dischargers, which are used for plasma cores. Uh, pl sorry, plasma grenades. A 122 Angie Edge Emitter. Not very good. More steel modulators, pneumatic hammer, 41 field stabilizer. We don't care about that at all. 175 motion tracking lens. Not useful for us at all. Those are, I believe, used to make goggles that let you do extra damage. Actually, those might be detection goggles, now that I think about it. Uh, but we don't have electronics to actually create it down here. A pneumatic reloader, those are for crossbows. Six shield modulator, 114 smart lens, nothing else here. Three shelves left in which we might find an electric discharger of decent quality, but I don't think we're going to find it here. 102 plasma discharger, I guess we'll take that. Oh, wait, I don't need any plasma mines. We're not making those. We don't have any traps set. Nope! Alright, we don't get lucky enough to find... Electric Discharger here. Okay, that sucks. There's one room left, but I don't remember there being any loot in it. Let's access this computer console. Iris Core Main Terminal. Documents. Nothing in it. Open Core Storage Room Door. Gate opened successfully. Iris version history. Version 17.908976. Last backup was made 189 years, 75 days, 13 hours ago. I'm not going to boot up a backup version of Iris. I don't care to reestablish her, just in case she is more insane than she was right now. We don't have a very high hacking skill, so we're not going to be able to uh, fix her if it comes down to it. And these are different cores used for the bot we saw by the gate. We don't need any of them, as we are capable of repairing the gate thanks to our mechanics skill. So we'll just leave those there. And that is it! That is everything here in the ARC power station. Whew. We've only been playing for like 20-something minutes, haven't we? <laughs> Talking with Chris makes me think we've been playing for about an hour or so. The game's been running for that long, but we still have more to do. Let's go and talk with the Faceless next. And the Burrers are not back. We can then, after that we talk with the Faceless and with Miss Baker, we'll see about finding the crazy man we were told about. Losing Shroom, we want all of those. I don't remember what they make, but I just know we want them all. Oh, we definitely want a Lake Poppy. We could use more Morphine. I, and I failed to click on it <laughs> a few dozen times. Take the Mind Shroom as well. You can end up being, by the way, hostile with the Faceless. Like, they may hate you when you're here. In which case, they give you a few other ways to potentially 
circumvent the faceless to get into this place rather than fight them head on. I've never actually had the faceless hostile to me before, so I don't know what that would be like here. Oh, we're here, by the way, for Miss Baker to start. So we were told this is the medical ward or facility. Let's visit that really quick. And there she is on that table. You see the faceless doctor before he sees you, since he appears to be focused on a strange device attached to his wrist. It consists of three large injectors facing the arm's direction, each one of those having a separate tube going up the arm and into differently colored vials attached to his armband. The other arm has no such device, but instead you notice small cylinders protruding from his pale blue-veined skin. As you look up to observe tubes which seem to connect his beak-like mass to the tank on his back, the faceless notices and speaks to you after activating his voice. I was notified you would come. If you're here to speak with the woman, know that she is awake, but very weak. What can you tell me of the woman's condition? Severe. She is stable, but the damage done to her body was extensive. Highly corrosive substance was used against her, liquefying large patches of skin on her face as well as upper body. The substance was also able to burn into, uh, into her abdominal cavity, partially dissolving her intestines and spleen while causing significant damage to her other internal organs. Her respiratory system suffered some degree of damage due to some of the substance entering through her oral cavity, through the larynx and bronchial tubes. She is unable to speak without the aid of a communicator as her vocal folds have been completely destroyed. Also, she has been blinded in one eye. Good God. I don't think I've ever actually talked with the faceless doctor before, so this is all new to me, even after 2,100 hours of playing this game. Once again, I'm almost never down in the deep caverns with my characters, though I have gotten several characters to the end of the game besides the ones I've played with you guys with. Most of my, though, 20 or 40 characters have not been down here. My goodness. Acid rounds. No joke. Holy crap. We were able to maintain her vital functions, but if she were disconnected from her life support, she would shortly die. Will she ever be able to recover? Yes. The process will take time, but it is possible. Some non-vital functions are irreparable. Are you going to turn her into one of your own? I mean, with all the augmentations and such. No. We do not do that. Once woman is able to maintain vitality without artificial aid, we will release her. Let's change the subject. He nods. I'd like to ask you some questions. I may only speak to you about the patient and exchange supplies. That is all we may discuss. They hinge, they tell you a whole lot about those little t uh, tubes on their arms, but they don't really let you inquire about them. To my knowledge, they allow the faceless to change their buffs while they're in combat, switching between strength, speed, and one other, which I can't remember at the top of my head. Been a while since I've actually had to fight them. Or since I chose to. Your commander told me I'm allowed to receive some medical supplies. Yes. The faceless walks over to the shelves and picks up several items. Once she returns, he hands you two super health hypos, three bottles of antidote, three bandages, two morphine shots, three desaturated synthetic inhalants, and four side boosters. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad. The super health hypos are really handy. After handing you these items, he proceeds to stare at you. See you later. Goodbye. Ooh, we can pick Laura Baker's pocket. <laughs> I didn't think it was possible to do this. All right, she has nothing in her pockets. All right, I, uh, sorry. I, I had, I had to, I had to check. I had to check if we could do it. I had to. I had to. I had to. I had to. Let's use one of these psychic inhalants. And then talk with her. 
The woman lies on the bed with her eyes firmly closed. Her face is dotted with reddish scars and blisters, as if spattered with a boiling or corrosive liquid which distorted her face into a grotesque visage. Her eyes begin to open. The left eyelid lifts quickly, allowing the brown iris to focus on you. The other one lags, twitching as it slowly rises to reveal a swirled mass that used to be an eye. A light on the small device grafted onto her neck flashes green as a metallic voice speaks to you while carefully being molded by her lips. What is happening? Laura, can you hear me? Yes. Who are you? I come from Southgate Station. I arrived there after you had left, so we hadn't had the chance to meet. I'm Tim. She is silent as her eye inspects you, sluggishly moving down and up again. A quick tremble of her lips could have been an attempt at a smile, but the motion never proceeds farther than that. Terry? My husband? He didn't make it. The healthy eye sheds a tear, but her expression remains unchanged. I know. I saw it all. But I had to ask, still. Tell me what happened to you. Okay. I'll start from the beginning. Sometime before the earthquake, we were... Terry and I were sent to Core City. We performed trading for the Southgate Station, and we were tasked with obtaining several things from the local merchants, as well as to meet one... man in the residential area so he could give us a package. Interesting. Who was this man? He had... He had some electrical equipment. Tanner never went into much details, only that the package was fragile. These devices were sensitive, I believe he said, so we were to take good care of the package. The man's name was James Steiner. That's all I know about him. You mentioned Tanner telling you about the package. He ordered it? We usually get the lists from Vera. But she wasn't around at the time, so Tanner... Tanner was the one who talked to us. I see. So you went to this man, this James Steiner guy, and then what? We met him near his home, close to the fence overlooking a part of the drop zone. I remember seeing fire and smoke rising from one of the shacks down there, but that's... that's not important. The man had to leave for work or something. I can't remember. He gave us a package and left us quickly. What did he look like? Light skin, black haired, average height, brown eyes. I really can't tell you much more. There's nothing striking about him. He behaved nothing out of the ordinary. Right, all right, you got the package and then? We went through our list and acquired everything we needed, except for a pair of power supply units Harold needed. Try energy something. Can't remember now, but it's irrelevant. We contacted Tanner and told him that we had got almost everything except for those power units. He told us it wasn't as urgent as we had thought and to return to Southgate Station. So we went down to the station, and that's when the earthquake hit. Express stopped all the trains until they surveyed the situation, and we couldn't get the signal to call Tanner again, ask him what to do next. So we waited. Tried to find those power units, but we were out of luck. We went to Harcourt City Bar and waited. 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 Until we heard the trains were going again. But none of those were able to get to Southgate Station. Yes, because of the cave-in. So Terry suggested we go to Rail Crossing. We would be closer to Southgate Station when the tracks eventually got cleared. And we could use we could see if Buzzer, he has a big shop there. If Buzzer, <laughs> if he had the power supplies for Harold. You never made it to Buzzer. No. She releases a metallic sigh before continuing. We were attacked at the rail crossing station by Cornell and the Acid Hunters. Acid Hunters? I don't understand. I found clues which led me to believe that they were the ones who attacked you. Did you find Cornell? His gang? I killed him, Laura. I killed all of them. 
Your words landed just as they should, you feel. Her stare reveals the rage and fury, the wish for the worst possible fate to stomp on the acid hunters and turn them into a smudge on the ground. Revenge. That's the name of her hunger, and you've just sated it. The tension that was building up just before you fed her the information has now vanished. Good. Good. They deserve it. I hope it was painful. Painful. She relaxes and continues. You haven't heard all of it yet, Tim. I will continue. We had noticed them a couple of times. Times in Core City. They must have followed us to rob us. It they threatened us with chemical weapons. They didn't even give us a chance to do anything. One of them, he hit Terry in the face and knocked him to the floor. I got a kick in the stomach. I had no air in my lungs and... As I was struggling, one of them dragged me by the hair until I managed to get on my feet. It all happened... within a second. They forced us into a cave. They had a camp there. Tied us. Took all our things. Took the package. Opened the package and found the cube. She smiles. You know so many things already. So here are the final details to the picture. It was an object no one of us had ever seen. It was fascinating and frightening at the same time. We allowed this remarkable thing to steal our attentions. The strange shape, the markings. It was out of this world. Then he closed the metal box. He... His face is now clear to me, but I don't want to describe it, nor what happened next. The only thing you should know is I woke up as they were dragging me away from Terry and into their... machine. Then I woke up here. They left him because he was dead. Terry. They had no use for him. And me. They, had, they hadn't found me by accident. They wanted this... cube. And I was the one who had it. Maybe the earthquake was their deed too. I don't know. I could never speak to them. They just took care of me. She points to the machines next to her. There are numerous pipes and tubes that go into her arms and abdomen. And indeed, it appears that what she's telling you is true. I would be dead without this. I will get you out of here, I promise. But first, tell me this. Do you know why Tanner lied to you about the contents of the package? I don't know why he lied to us. If I knew, he, I wouldn't have been here, I guess. There was always a sense of mystique about him. But he was far from being the only one who made you wonder, is he really the person he says he is? I can't speak anymore. I'm tired. I'm so tired. I have to leave now, but I will return quickly. I want to go home. You will. Just be patient some more. Doctor? Okay, nothing else. Okay, now that we know she wants to go home, we will talk with the commander and say that we would like her to indeed be brought home. Speak. Can we return Laura to Southgate Station somehow? No. It is impossible at the moment. Why not? Our resources are necessary elsewhere. The device is our priority right now. Everything else is of less importance. And after you get the device? Then it will be possible to arrange her transportation. Okay. Uh. Sorry, I'm going through everything we've already said before. Oh my goodness! <laughs> okay, back to this. Alright, there we go. So let's see. Okay, we can now ask about the gate. Or rather, uh, well, we could ask about this gate originally, but now I've seen the gate, and so now I can I understand this a bit more. There's a large gate deep inside the complex that I can't get past. Do you know anything that could help me open it? 
No. We have some information on it, but nothing you will be able to use. What I may tell you is that the gate is being... ...viciously protected by Chort's endless hordes. And that behind it lies Chort itself, as well as what you know as... ...the Cube. Darn it! I noticed that you have Chortus captives in the base. Yes. These Chortus were captured during the Hollow Earth invasion. Did you read their minds as well? Yes. It is an efficient way to harvest information. Can you tell me what you found out? Yes. Chortists. These Chortists, and data indicates most if not all the Institute of Chort members, possess limited information on the true nature of Chort and ulterior motives and actions of Aiden, Chort's prime agent. The whole premise of Chortism is a fabrication, and Institute of Chort serves to be nothing less than a tool at both of their disposal, one that they use as a means of achieving their goal. What are their motives? Power? It's, I'm pretty sure it's to find particular folks who possess qualities, genomes, mutations, that Chort could benefit from and bring him to and bring them to Chort, like Detrius, for example. One's intentions are best understood through observing one's actions. Based on all the data available, we've come to the conclusion that Aiden's goal was transcendence, elevation of form and mind, power. The only way to achieve this was by allying himself with Chort. Chort's goal is liberation. And the only way to achieve it is by granting Aiden what he wished. They both benefit from the relationship. And why do you think that is what Aiden's goal was? His body has yet to be examined, but we have sufficient data to assume that Aiden had underwent multiple mutations over the years, altering his appearance, capabilities, and lifespan to a significant degree, and they had no intention of halting his personal progress. The concealing nature of his, as well as all Chortus clothing, exists for that reason. So that he may work on himself under the mask of secrecy. By sharing it with his subordinates, he legitimizes, he legitimizes I can't pronounce that word, makes it appear transparent, while it is in, in fact, oblique. I've never actually asked about them either before, viewer. 2,000 hours, and I've never asked about the Chortus because... I've never gone back to the commander after the first time of talking with him. All right. I have no further questions for the moment. All right, viewer. Let's see. Let's get on some different equipment. We're not going to need to worry about... Oh, stop. Not going to need to worry about bots anytime soon, I think. Hey, guys. You guys have a good day. Enjoy your lunch break. Did we leave any shelves lying around? <laughs> we did not. Arg. All right. Let's double. Before we go and look for the crazy person, I want to go back and leave some of the supplies we've picked up behind. And while I'm doing so, I'm going to be grabbing any other mushrooms that we have not yet broken down with me. Because, oh, well. No. No, you won't. Technically, I don't know that the, this crazy person, assuming we don't make a hostile out of him, will barter creature bits and fungus for things. But in addition, I don't think he'll do that until we complete a quest for him. All right, so... Fungus goes here. Uh, 
Uh, we have one fantastic plasma core, and the rest of this is just so. so oh, wait. The rest of this is just so so. It's good. But it's not incredible. We picked up a ton more batteries as well. We're up to 26 of them after our battle. And we have even more batteries sitting there if we need them. So we'll continue to use our shock spear for the foreseeable future. Unless something could be immune to it. Like we fight more coil spiders. But I don't think coil spiders are in the cards. Now we go to the west. I'm expected to fight more burrers here and some death stalkers. Let's take all the shrooms we find. The burrers are in this area, as you can tell from the eggs which are located here, and the death stalkers are near this, which is where we want to go. Let's deal with them first, I suppose. Do I want caviars? I guess we'll take them. I know there's a Death Stalker here, viewer. <laughs> At least one in normal mode, which means that I'm expecting there to be more than just one on hard mode. Now, where are you? Yeah, uncanny dodge. Woo, see this from both of those things. One of them's probably in this little corner here. I do not know where the other one went. No clue where the second might have gone. I don't think it's on this side of the fire. It may have gone just slightly outside of our vision on the, over here into the darkness. I'm going to guess that's where it went. It 
And if so, then it's running around the burrows right now to try to reach me, I, I suspect. Oh, hello! Burrer? Oh, God! <laughs> oh, hello! My, you're rather big. Some burr warriors. Are sh oh, and another normal burrer. Okay. So, uncanny dodge. Oh my goodness, is off a cooldown. So we can probably move up as far as we can and use it. Then we're going to use premed and send a fireball into the, all the burrers. Set only one on fire. Let's try one of these plasma grenades. Unbelievable. It landed exactly where I tossed it. We'll be running to the fire. Oops. Good thing that misclick could, did not let me go too far. Come and get me. I'm in the flames if you want me. Okay. Now they'll probably... Probably run in the flames. Was that above me, or was that a hint as to where the Death Stalker is? It doesn't matter. We're killing this. We charging our spear. We have more warriors. Oh, look at all of them. Let's do it. Let's continue to fight. We can move up. Oh my goodness, they have, they have a lot of warriors. Method O Tim, Uncanny Dodge is on cooldown, so do not move up anymore. You didn't take that much damage, but you, you might as well use recurrence. They won't be able to reach me this turn, so we'll move a little bit away, keeping them within the range of our own uh, our own threat range. Oop, there's no more burrower left. Okay, we're going to want to kill that. There's two of them left. We'll deal with this warrior to start. ones are in the way. There we go. Oh, that's a shame. We're going to kill it with our, our taser. Which might be a mistake, because the Death Stalker still wants to get me. Uh 
Uh oh. Most of the flames are going away. I'd rather not use another one of our MK3 plasma grenades right here. I don't think we need to. We'll use a fireball. Nice. Very good. I cannot recharge our spear. If I move back on this side... We still have some flames over here blocking the Deathstalker from reaching us. I'm surprised the Deathstalker, like, when I'm over... When I went over here, and all this was on fire, the Deathstalker didn't use its move... its movement ability to reposition itself past the fire and closer to us again. Probably kill the big one. Let's move up. Oh, Tim. I was like, just one hit will probably kill the others with uh, our electricity. Can full charge our shield. We don't need a shield. Our spear. We don't need the shield. Uh, I don't th think there's any left. Just in case the Deathstalker kills us, let's save the game so we don't have to redo the battle against all the uh, burrs again. My goodness, look at how all the remains around here. Oh no. Well, someone's very angry. I can't say I blame you. You had to wait until all those burrowers were, de were destroyed before you made your attempt at me. I can't remember if there's two of those here on normal mode. I... I don't think there is. I think there's just one. Okay, that clears off all the corpses. Got a bit of burr poison. We have no ampules for any of it, though. And we get another fossilized egg. And we'll leave in the in here all of these carapaces. That we don't need. Carapi? Is that what they're called? <laughs> Do you think multiple carapaces? It's probably just carapace. Carapaces. Carapai. I don't know. Let's take the spirit mushroom. Alright, another room cleared. Let's get over here now. How's our spear holding up? Uh, did I bring any normal? We have a single normal electronic pair. Okay, we're going to repair our tongues and steel knife. Then we're going to fully charge our taser. The creatures here will respawn as well to my recollection. Oh, we didn't search this Death Stalker. Could be dangerous. There might be another one that might have been the third Death Stalker we just killed. As opposed to the second, it is not. Okay. Nice, we get some death uh we get a, a tail. Some burrow traps. Just two of them? Third. Spirit poison bear trap. 
Let's throw another flare just to make sure there was only three. Okay. Locked, but only lock picking 10 required. The most flimsy of locks. Almost like you're supposed to be able to get into this door. Jackhammer, we already have one. And two lockers. We can leave those lockers there at the moment. I'm not going to take any of the things I see here. Not quite yet. Hydraulic fluid, fluid canister, which we're not allowed to take, and a fireplace, and a barrel. We have all three fluid canisters, I believe, so we don't need a fourth. Good to know there's a, there is one here, though, I suppose, if you really want one. A terrified man leaps out of the locker, his formal sanctuary, a former sanctuary, and pushes you aside. Despite his age, his movements are swift and agile, yet as it usually comes with old age, this fear-driven overexertion is likely to pain him once he comes to a full rest. He raises his crossbow. He doesn't have one in the, well, for what I'm seeing. Taking a shaky aim at your face. Words come out of his mouth as quickly as he did as he did from the locker and are carried with my quivering, chalky voice. What you doing here, intruder? Eh? Eh? Move one finger and I'll launch a bolt through your hollow skull. For some reason, this makes me think of Resident Evil 2. I don't know why. Not the remake, the original. Oh, the very beginning! Uh, you, you pass through this weapon store, and there's a guy there with a crossbow who immediately raises it and points it at you, right? Who are you? What are you doing here? I forget that gentleman's name. Been a long, long time. 20, 30 years since I played the original, I think, Resident Evil 2. Damn it, man! You scared me more than I scared you! Put that thing down and let's talk! Not so fast, intruder! Not so fast! He squeezes the crossbow even harder. First, I want you to tell me who you are and... And, and what in the echoing words of reason are you doing in my damn house? I am Tim, and I'm lost in the deep caverns. I'm trying to find a way out, but I suppose I found this shack of yours. Hey, it's not a shack. It Forget about that. Now you... Oh, you're not one of those devils, uh... Ch shortest, by any chance? No. His tense stare lasts for a few more silent moments before slowly losing intensity. He lowers his weapon as well, but still maintains alertness. I am Leo. I am Leo. I am Leo. I'd say nice to meet you, but I don't know if I'd be honest about it. No, no. Look, I don't want anything from you at all. I'm just going to leave you to whatever it is you were doing. Eh, KK. You better move on now, intruder. We could just walk out. Technically, I guess I should, considering what I just said. But he can help us. So let's talk him one more time. What? Uh, you again? What the broken stalactite do you want now, huh? I was wondering if you could help me with some things. You look like you know a lot about the deep caverns. Why would I want to help someone who broke into my house, huh? Because you're a good man and your knowledge of the area is extensive. I hope. <laughs> yeah, right. Listen, if you need something for me, you ought to give something in return. Now I already have a thing in mind, intruder. Tell me what you need, old man. I lost something very important to me. Very dear. Very valuable. Six days ago, I believe it was. Or seven? I was scavenging around the complex for supplies when I ran into, uh, Chortis. Yes. Had to run for my life. Devils. I ran from him, and after I got back here, I realized I had dropped my knife somewhere along the way. Lost it! It was so pretty. And a handle made from bone. Bone. 
A beauty, yes. I need it back. So if you can find it, I'd be very thankful. I could help you. I know stuff. Only if you help me. But you ought to be careful. There's been a lot of fighting between the tortoise and the mass, so watch out. I forget, son. Ah, yeah. The place where I ran into the patrol was west of the storages. Yeah, yes. West. All right. See you soon, Leo. All right, let's go get that dagger for him. The viewer, if, I don't know how long I've been playing for. It feels like at least 50 minutes. So we'll position ourselves to go and get the knife. Actually, I guess we'll poke out really quick and see if we can find it. Whew, look at all that stuff. I'm supposed to get all of it done. To the west of the storage facilities. So not here. Those are west into the storage facilities. You know... We'll explore a tiny bit. We'll play a little longer, viewer. We'll play just a little longer. Oh, hello, Faceless. Sorry about that. Can we go in here, by the way? Something's blocking it from the other side. Oh, can we actually peek inside here? Probably not, right? Unless we're, we're going to get a failed. What? We can see ourselves. <laughs> How does that make any sense? That doesn't make any sense. All right, let's uh, let's have some cave hopper steak and head on in. We have a breakable wall. Oh, my jackhammer isn't with me. We really want the jackhammer viewer. There's some places we want to get into, and the only way we can get access to them is with dynamite or a jackhammer. So we're gonna go and get it from our stash. And I guess we have been playing for long enough. So we will also call this session. So yeah, so we'll end it here. Thank you all for watching. When we come back, we'll begin exploring some of Hollow Earth. We will probably find the knife sooner rather than later if my memory serves uh, me as well as it did, or hopefully still serves me as well as it, as it always has, or better. But we'll, we'll find it hopefully soon. Turn the quest in, which will allow us to explore Hollow Earth a little longer before we have the Eye of Chort staring at us. I do have three of them, right? I do have three of them. Oh! I almost forgot one last thing before I leave. The HS-89 hydraulic pump drive shaft we took from the worm caves, there was a second one. What that means is that this is not the right drive shaft. We need a different one. And I think that drive shaft is in the Tythonus lab, so we have to go in there. And I remember that I don't remember the trick to that throw in the slab at the moment. <laughs> I just know it's going to be tricky. In any case, we'll stop here. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.